there's always a reason. So why can't people sleep? So nothing happens without a reason. And so whenever there's a health problem, number one, we look at history. And often history will give an indication of why the person can't sleep. What are the symptoms they can't sleep? <laughs> and then different things are tried and we look at the response. We will learn from Barbara O'Neill, a highly respected expert in wellness and a passionate advocate for natural health practices. Today, we're exploring a topic that influences every part of our lives, sleep. Barbara will delve into the effects of sleep hormones, including one that helps slow the aging process. Whether you're having trouble falling asleep, waking up feeling unrested, or simply want to understand why sleep is vital for our overall well-being, you're in the right place. With extensive experience in holistic health and nutrition, Barbara has committed her career to guiding individuals toward improved health using natural approaches. Her reputation stems from her thoughtful integration of traditional wisdom and contemporary science, providing practical and impactful solutions for better well-being. Sleep is vital for almost every aspect of our health. It's during sleep that our bodies repair tissues, consolidate memories, and regulate essential processes like hormone production and immune function. Without adequate sleep, we can experience a range of issues from impaired cognitive function to increased risk of chronic diseases. Taking care of your sleep is a cornerstone of overall health. It's not just about getting enough hours of sleep, but also about the quality of that sleep. Paying attention to your body's signals and making small changes can lead to significant improvements in how you feel and function. Barbara will proceed with telling us why sleep is so important. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you what happens when you sleep. And there's a tiny little gland in the base of the brain called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland releases four hormones every night. And in the winter, they're released between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. But we've got summertime at the moment, so it's between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. So what are these hormones and how come they're only released in that time? It's to do with the, uh, the circadian rhythm. You've heard of the circadian rhythm? And our circadian rhythm is basically set by uh, light and dark signal exposure in the eyes, the moon, the tides, it all has to do with this. Light and dark signals are fed through the optic nerve to a control centre in the brain where the, where the um, body clock is situated. And the body clock communicates with the pineal gland. And that's why it is released at these times. Let's hear more about the pineal gland. What are these hormones? One is serotonin, that's your mood hormone. And if the children have a late night, what are they like in the morning? They're not happy chappies, and neither are the parents. <laughs> and now for the second hormone. Melatonin is called the fix and rejuvenate nighttime hormone. Melatonin is the one that's responsible for the increase in healing, rest, rejuvenation in those hours. Please take a quick moment to like and subscribe to this video so we may continue sharing and creating Barbara O'Neill as insights. Barbara will now tell us about the third hormone. Another hormone is arginine vasitocin. An arginine vasitocin is a hormone that puts us into a deep sleep. An arginine vasitocin is our natural painkiller. So if, if you have pain of any type and you go to bed early, your natural painkiller will kick in. But there's a side effect. Using the natural painkiller, which the body will automatically do if there's pain of any type in the body, using that natural painkiller, there will be a, a waste from it. 
So the next night when you go to bed, if that waste hasn't been eliminated, then, then the pineal gland won't release another dose of arginine vasotocin. But if you exercise in the day, if you do that high intensity interval training in the day, you will always get a perspiration built happening and that's releasing the waste. And that's why exercise in the day is vital in maintenance of pain of any type in the body because it helps to release your natural painkiller every night. And that also puts you into a deep sleep. And now for the fourth hormone. The other hormone is epithalamin. And epithalamin is a hormone that increases learning capacity. If you ask the teachers, can you tell the kids that had a late night? Oh, you can, because they don't, it's almost as if they haven't got the ability to concentrate, uh, retain the information. So you can say, I don't think you got your epithalamin last night. And, we sh and as you'll find on Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon at two o'clock when we look at the mind, we should be learning new things right up until the day we die. And one of the reasons <coughs> brains deteriorate is because they stop being challenged and they stop learning new things. So to increase your ability to learn and retain, go to bed early and get your epithalamin. Epithalamin also has another important function, which Barbara will share with us now. Epithalamin also slows down aging. If you have a look, well don't have a close look at some of the rock stars from the 60s. <laughs> from a distance they might have brown hair and they might be slender, but look up close and and they have aged incredibly. Why, why do I mention rock stars? Because what time do rock stars usually go to sleep? <laughs> Not till incredibly late. I was, what, I was reading one research paper that said that, that regular late nights has a similar effect on the body to alcoholism and drug addiction because it's not allowing the body to revive and recharge every night. Epithalamin, a peptide derived from the pineal gland, is believed to have significant anti-aging effects due to its role in regulating various biological processes. This peptide helps slow aging by enhancing the function of the pineal gland, which is crucial for maintaining circadian rhythms and hormonal balance. One of its primary functions is to improve the body's ability to produce melatonin, a hormone that not only regulates sleep patterns, but also possesses powerful antioxidant properties. Melatonin helps protect cells from oxidative stress and damage, which can accelerate the aging process. Additionally, Epithalamin influences the immune system, promoting a more robust and resilient response to age-related diseases. By supporting cellular repair and regeneration, epithalamin contributes to improved overall health and vitality, thereby mitigating some of the effects of aging. Epithalamin is available as a supplement, though it may not be as widely known or accessible as other supplements. It is typically offered in the form of capsules, tablets, or injectables, often under the brand name Epithalon or similar variations. So, Barbara, what affects these hormones? There are some things that can stimulate the release of these and there are some things that can inhibit. And we're going to look at Sustain Me and I'm going to show you how the basic principles of Sustain Me, these laws of health, how they can influence sleep. Sunshine. How does sunshine affect the release of the uh, pineal gland secretions at night? Well, it's light and dark signals that are fed through the optic nerve that communicate with the pineal gland that help to balance your circadian rhythm. And I first learnt this when I, it was probably about four years ago, I was running a program at Wildwood Health Retreat and I flew in on, I think it was the Saturday night. I slept, but I hadn't had much sleep on the way. And then I had to consult with 25 people. 
I was able to consult with about 20 the first day and then the rest the next day. And that night, I didn't get to sleep till 3 a.m. <laughs> with the jet lag. And here's the top reason preventing us from sleeping. What stops sleep is getting annoyed with the fact that you can't sleep. <laughs> Everyone knows that. So the tendency is to go, this is ridiculous, I've got to sleep, I've got a huge day. Does that put you to sleep? No, that'll never put you to sleep. So the best thing to do if you can't sleep in the night is to lie there and thank God that you can't sleep. Thank you, Father, that I can't sleep, now I can talk to you. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says, In everything give thanks, <laughs> for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Barbara will now share with us another factor preventing us from being able to fall asleep. And also, what I find will stop sleep is getting into the chat room. You know the chat room? Now I'm going to do this, and I'll go over here, and I've got to do this, and I'll put this over there, and I'm going to make it chat, 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 chat. I've got a terrible chat room. I usually have a nap in the afternoon to give me energy for this evening, and the only way I can sleep is to read a book. And as soon as I start to drop off, I quickly put the back down, and, the, and I can often escape the chat room. Improving your sleep starts with creating a sleep-conducive environment. Ensure your bedroom is dark, quiet, and cool. Invest in comfortable bedding and consider using blackout curtains, earplugs, or a white noise machine. So Barbara, what can we do to fall asleep? So you've got to get out of the chat room because if you get in the chat room, you'll never sleep. So how do you get out of the chat room? So I, I'm, a, I'm a solution person, so my chat room can go to 100 miles an hour. So I have to read, or if I'm awake in the night, I'll start to go through my, the memory verses. One of the things I love to do is memorize. Here's another sleep tip. Establishing a consistent sleep schedule is crucial. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, even on weekends. Barbara loves to tell stories about some of her conversations. Now she will share a few with us. One lady said she lies there and she thinks of someone in her life that she always just loved being with. Maybe it was the great aunt, maybe it was a grandmother, and she had the most beautiful garden. And I loved this meal. She, see that? You're starting to, to think about that. One lady said, and Adriana Huffington, she wrote a book on the science of sleep, she said, lie there and be thankful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much that I'm not in a Siberian work camp and I've only got a piece of newspaper for a blanket. Thank you so much that I'm in a comfortable bed. Thank, 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 thank. And people say to me, how can you stand being away from home for, for so long? Do you know what I do? I love where I am. It's a choice. You just love where you are. I love the people that I'm meeting. I'm in a nice room, you're just, you're just thankful. It's a powerful thing, that's why God said, in everything, give thanks. Also, incorporate a relaxing bedtime routine to signal your body it's time to wind down. Barbara has more stories about how to fall asleep. So there's some of the things that you can do to get out of the chat room and help yourself get into sleep. My son James said that what he does, he just lies there saying, don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think, don't think. He said that puts him to sleep. <laughs> and my son Peter, when he was about 15, he had, a, he had a theory too. He said, I just stare at my eyelids. <laughs> he reckons that puts him to sleep. So you can see what I mean. You've got to acknowledge there is a chat room and you've got to get out of that chat room. What, whatever it takes. And being thankful stops you being annoyed because if you get annoyed, you will, you will never sleep. It is hard. It takes, takes discipline. <laughs> it takes discipline, but, but, but you can do it. Remember, you will get better at it. And so this night when I didn't get to sleep till 3 in the morning, I finally got to sleep and then woke up with a start, it was 7.30 and I was supposed to having breakfast at 7. And, and then through the day, 
I was sitting in the consultation room and one of the guests was taking a while and the sun was coming in the, win in the, the glass windows behind me but it was open so it was screened. So I turned around and I just let the sun go on my face. Do you know that night I slept? And that's when I realised that the best prevention for jet lag I have found and also to help you sleep in the day is let your eyes have sun. Now we can never look at the full sun but what you can do is you can close your eyes and put your face up towards the sun and the sun's rays will go through your eyelids and that will go into the pathways and, and connect with your pineal gland. So, and that, so that was probably about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Ever since then, whenever I travel, I make sure I sit in the sun. And I remember when I had a new grand, grandbaby, I just went outside in the sun with her on my knee. And just being outside, not actually looking at the sun, but just letting the sun touch your face, those rays go in and they reset your body clock. And Dr. Neil Nedley, he found that people who... Um, well, he found about 80% of people who had depression, their circadian rhythm was out. And we can reset our circadian rhythm by, the, by being exposed to the first hour of light in a day. And how many people that get depressed, or who are depressed, go to bed late and get up late? And they miss that first hour of light in a day. And that resets that circadian rhythm. So sunshine in the day helps to reset the circadian rhythm. Another sleep tip is to optimize your daytime by engaging in regular exercise, maintaining a balanced diet, and limiting screen time before bed. Barbara, what is the second component of Sustain Me? Use of water. Our pineal gland leads a full hydration to be able to produce and release those hormones at night. Managing stress through relaxation techniques or problem solving can also enhance sleep quality. Barbara, what is the third component of Sustain Me? Sleep. We should, to get those hormones, we have to be in bed by nine winter, 10 summer. Now if you want to be in bed by 9, you've got to start planning for that at 7. Isn't that true? Yeah. If you want to be in bed by 9, you can't start thinking about it at 5 to 9. So my daughter-in-law, Arana, she likes her two little ones, her, when I was minding them, 4 and 6. She wants them in bed by 6.30. And I found the only way to do it is to start at 4.30. Start winding them down <laughs> and, and you're heading there, you're heading that. And I used to watch the way she did it and she would give them something like to eat at five and then by 5.30 she, they're in the bath and then by six they're into the bedroom and changing and choosing their books and reading the story and, you, and, and the blinds are pulled down so it's dark and they're in bed by 6.30. So you, you've got to do it to you. Start winding down, start winding down. You've got your, your, your mind towards you going to bed there. One lady who went to bed at midnight every night, she started to go to bed at 11.30 every night. And a week later, she started to go to bed 11 every night. And then a week later, she went to... T Can you see what she did? Little by little by little, she trained her body back into sleep. So sleep. Additionally, excessive fluids before bed and create a sleep dedicated space. Barbara, what is next on the Sustain Me prescription? Trust. One thing that will keep us awake is worry. So trusting in God. And what does God say? He says in everything, give thanks. But I broke my leg. God says, be thankful. Doesn't mean you have to like it. Thank you, but my leg is broken, Father. I don't like it, I don't understand, but I'm trusting that out of this I'm going to learn some things I would never have learned if I hadn't broken my <coughs> leg. <laughs> Here's the fifth component. Abstain. There are some things that will block the release of those hormones. One is caffeine. Caffeine actually stops the release of those hormones for five hours. 
One lady said, does that mean I can drink the coffee in the morning? <laughs> well, you're still disrupting your, your neurotransmitters. Having alcohol at night, it drops the production of those hormones by 41%. And so those stimulants that get you going in the morning, they're actually depriving you of sleep at night, making it even harder to get up and go in the morning. And now the sixth component. Inhale. A great way to get to sleep is what I mentioned before, five seconds in through the nose, Hold for three seconds and then five seconds out. In fact, tonight when you go to bed, try it. Try it ten times. And often you, in the morning you'll think back, now how did I get, did I get to eight? If you got to ten and you're still not asleep, do another ten. Because remember what the low sleep breathing does? It stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system. And your parasympathetic nervous system is your peace. It's a karma. To come. Now to finish up sustain. Nutrition. When we have our largest meal at the end of the day, it's not easy to sleep. Because when we lay down to sleep, our stomach wants to sleep too. Some people say, well, I can't sleep if my body's ravenous hungry. So what you've got to do is if you're a little bit hungry at six o'clock, you're going to be ravenous at nine. So if you're a little bit of hung, got a little bit of hunger at six o'clock, have a bowl of soup, have a protein drink, have a banana or an avocado, just eat something light. And that will prevent that ravenous hunger in the middle of the night. But if you're really hungry, just remember when you're asleep, you don't know what you are. Now for the M and me. Moderation. Moderation certainly comes into the timing of eating, the timing of sleep. The final component. Exercise. When we're physically exhausted, we sleep better. Many people today are having trouble with sleep because they're not physically exhausted because their bodies have hardly done anything through the day. That's why the high intensity interval training, don't do it before you go to sleep because it'll wake you up. <laughs> the best time is early in the morning. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.